Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about Redux. So this code on the right side is part of the video I made about props, which is part of the uh, state management section of this course. Um, so you can either watch that video or find the source code on GitHub. And I have a link down below to it in the description box. So let's get started with using Redux. And um, we are going to use the Redux toolkit since it's the um, recommended way uh, to use Redux. As you can see right here, Redux toolkit is our official recommended approach for writing Redux logic. And this is of course from the official Redux docs. So we're going to use that. Um, in order to use uh, Redux toolkit with React, we will we'll also need a package called React Redux. So I already have it installed, but of course you can install it yourself by executing this command right here. So these are the steps uh, we are going to uh, take in order to rewrite our app and let it make use of Redux um, and thus not using the props as we're doing right now. We have to take these steps. So I will just head over to the uh, Redux toolkit quick start and because we will need some you know basic setup I'm going to use this right here because it um, involves some boilerplate code so as you can see the first thing we have to do is to create a Redux store so I'm going to make a new folder right here we'll call it Redux and I will make a file called store.js I will just copy and paste this code in here. Then we have to provide the Redux store to React, as you can see right here. So I will go to the index.js file and I will wrap the app component with the provider provided by React Redux. And I will pass the store like so. Of course, we need to import that as well. There we go. So that's the next step. And now we want to create a Redux state slice. And we have to change this a little bit. Uh, but for now, we'll copy it. Go back to Redux. Um, I will call this slices. And of course, you don't have to use this folder structure, but uh, I like to keep things uh, a little bit organized. So right here in slices, I will call this um, count slice.js. I will copy and paste the code. And we're not going to call this counter, but we'll just call it count. Um, let's take a look. We can remove this comment to that text and we won't need increment and decrement for our app and we will also not increase the amount by a certain value but we will just use the uh, input field right here to immediately set that count value uh, so what i will do i will say um, set count and now the state that value will be equal to the action that payload. So if you uh, have watched the video about the context API, this might look very familiar to you, where we also worked with um, the, the payload from an action. So if this is not very clear to you, then I recommend you to check out that video as well. And we can also remove this line right here. And now, of course, you want to export the actions, but we have only one action, so we can remove these ones. So that looks good. I will save it. And now we have to add that slice reducer to the store. So I will get back to the store. And I will say count is count reducer. But we have to import this manually. So I will say import count reducer. Uh, let's see. 
from and it's right here in slices count slice there we go i'll save it this should be fine okay and now we can uh, get to the next step where we are going to uh, actually use our uh, state that is defined in our uh, counter slicer actually let's call this count slice and of course we have to change this as well there we go um so we're going to use that state but we will also use the set count um property to change the value so let's go to the app component i will close these ones for now and let's first make sure that the um, component that is called uh let's see it's right here under components the multiplied by two component that's nested in the calculation overview component uh, is using that state value so i can remove the prop for now and i get into here and i will also remove this prop and we have to go one level deeper remove this and then we finally have our multiplied by two component. I'll just quickly close these ones. Okay. And we can also remove this. And now of course, our code will error because it cannot find the input value, but that is exactly what we are going to um, set right here. So what we will say, we will say const count is use selector, which is a hook imported from React Redux. We take in the state, and then we want to take the state.count.value. And now if I pass this count right here, save it, and go to our React app, it was says counter slicer is not defined. Ah, there we go, I refresh the app. So you see we got a default value of zero, and if I go to the count slice and we change this default value, for example, to 15, of course, do note that uh, this number will be multiplied by two, but now when I save it and I refresh the app, there you go. We got number 30. So now you might wonder how this is actually working and what we're doing in the multiplied by two component is we're using the use selector hook to grab the state, but specifically the state that count that value. And the state is stored in our store right here. So what we do right here, we access state that count that value. So we, this is our state. Then we take the count, which is actually our count uh, slice. So let's go there. And then we grab the value from there. So that's how it's working. And now the last thing we need to do, because our in input component is currently not um, changing the state. And of course, now it still uses that set input value, but we are not going to use props anymore in this example. So I will remove this for now. And remove the prop here getting into the input component. And now we want to dispatch an action to the count slice. So we can say const uh, dispatch is use dispatch. There we go. And now instead of saying set input value, we are going to dispatch and as you remember, we set a uh, property on here called set count, which is the one we're going to use. So we say set count, import it, and then give it the payload of the event the target dot value, which is the value that we then um, type in our input field and is being used 
to set the state value since it's our payload. So now when I save this and I refresh the app and for now we just set the default value back to zero. So now when I start typing, our app works fine again. So this is of course a very simplified way of using Redux. And in this case, you definitely wouldn't want to use something like Redux uh, in this very simple example where props or component composition would have been perfectly fine. Uh, but I hope um, you know you at least have a bit of an understanding of how to use Redux. And if you want to learn more about Redux, uh, you know the documentation is great. Uh, I recommend you to head over to Redux Toolkit. Uh, straight away because um, Redux Toolkit definitely makes it easier to uh, get started with Redux and um, and use it. Um, you also have like the you know like the main documentation of Redux itself, where you can learn more about how Redux is actually working under the hood. But for more like practical use cases, I recommend you to check out Redux Toolkit. Um, but for now. That was pretty much everything I wanted to um, talk with you about uh, concerning Redux. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.